Mike, pull the rope. Like his father and grandfather before him, Joseph is master boatman. As the last man on his archipelago still making the Barry Way, he is passing on his knowledge to his son, Mike. Can I try? So... Pull it toward you. Towards me, so that moves the float under the water. What now? Bring it back up. Push hard, hard, like this. Okay, so that lifts the float. So it actually acts as a rudder and centerboard. Ah, that's nice. I'm going for it, flat out. <laughs> Beautiful. Typical of the Isle of Pines. You don't find them anywhere else. The traditional canoe dates back to? Back to ancient times. The canoe served as a means of transport. It's big. You can carry people on this. People in a net. These canoes were generally designed for fishing. Situated 1,200 kilometers east of Australia, the archipelago of New Caledonia is made up of five main islands and a multitude of small islets. Joseph's village, Vau, is on the Isle of Pines, an 18-kilometer long strip of land shared by eight tribes. Joseph and Mike belong to the Clan of the Sea. They supervise traditional rites and fishing rituals. They are the keepers of the know-how and the techniques required to build canoes. Today, as head of the clan, I've called a meeting of the customary council because I need a new canoe for fishing. Joseph, if you agree, when could we cut the tree to make a canoe? It isn't a good moon at the moment. The wood may rot. Yes, but for a small canoe, it should be all right. I'm not too concerned. Is everyone OK with that? So it's decided. We'll cut the tree. Prepare the tools and sharpen the blades. Mark, you can come with us to cut the tree. OK. Must there always be a consensus to do something like this? It's important to talk about it. Otherwise, if you don't come to the meeting and do something without our agreement, it goes down badly. We have to stop you. Then we sit around the table to talk about it. So there are always meetings before each decision? Plus, it's for the clan leader. So even if some people are disgruntled, they are forced to go along with it. I see. Driven by a strong breeze, we sail to the southern tip of the island. This is where we find the columnar pine forests. These trees can reach 50 meters high. Their soft, easy to cut wood is used for making hulls and floats. See if there's a tree that suits you. I don't know. Take a look around. See whether the size suits you, whether it's the right height. How about this one? No, that's no good. Well, let's press on. Ah, this is a good tree. I spotted it earlier. Both are good. 
How about this one? No, not this one. Okay, let's go back this way. Maybe this one will do the trick. I'll use this one. It's perfect for cutting. He's chosen his tree. This is the one he wants. Now we'll clear up a little around it. We leave any shoots around the foot of the tree. We need to think of the future so our children have trees to cut down too. Reinforcements are here. All the youngsters are here. Hi. Hello. So now we have a little manpower. For the young people of the village, to take part in the construction of a canoe is to follow in the footsteps of the elders and carry on the ancestral tradition. It establishes their credentials as members of the clan. This kid is very young. That's right. <laughs> so are you impressed? This is the second time he's carved out a canoe. He's worked on one before. I'm a sailor. I've been sailing since I was your age, since I was 10 years old. You're going to learn, but he had to learn to sail too. Do you prefer canoes or motorboats? Uh, both. Ah, both. I thought as much. Kids like tradition, but they like to go fast too. Will this be a big boat? According to our calculations... How big will it be? It'll be six or seven meters. Nature decides. Modern boats follow a blueprint. We have no blueprint, no plan. We work with nature. So with this tree, we follow the curves. We're so used to making boats through a straight axis. Even if the canoe is twisted, it will still sail. Even a crooked hull will part the waves. That's all. <laughs> Come on, Mark. You do the shouting. Way. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. And to the whole team. Including the reinforcements. You work together. And the white man's machine, as we call it. Yeah. It sure saves time. The wood must be dragged to the village. I take the opportunity to go fishing in the lagoon with Mike. The water is turquoise, revealing a sandy seabed carpeted with rocks and coral. This is the perfect spot to fish for lobsters. Do you really need gloves? Yes, the lobster stings. They have spines. On the shell. On all lobsters? All lobsters. So these are workers' gloves? <laughs> yes.
c'est super. It's great. I caught it all by myself. My first, although you did help me. How many do you usually catch, Mike? Uh, around 100 kilos. 100 kilos? In a good session, we bag 100 kilos. So that's what, 200 lobsters? Yeah, that's right. The little ones, you put them back? The small ones. You're careful not to take them. Yeah. From here to there must be no less than seven to seven and a half centimeters. The length, so that's the rule. Yes. 7.5 centimeters. You're okay with this one? We have more. Ten. Ten. <laughs> Hope they don't lock us up. <laughs> Night will soon fall, and the village is still far away. We decide to camp on the beach. A few branches to light a fire, lobster to eat. A simple existence at one with nature. Do you often come fishing like this at the fireside? It's our daily existence. You are well served by nature. Everyone pays attention. Did you learn it in books? It's passed on by word of mouth. If it was written down, you wouldn't need to ask the elders how to go about things, how to do this fishing. So no exchange? Exactly. There'd be no more exchanges between the young people and old. Everyone would be reading about it in books. Mm-hmm, on their own. Hats off to the cooks. This is excellent. <laughs> 